Okay. Now, I still didn't get the correct count for the number of stations for the Pacific Ocean in 2014 in May. So someone should be able to tell me how many stations we have in May. <laughs> now you, you May 2014 in the Pacific Ocean. Is this, uh, someone says 7,000. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so so we learn how to use in the double gate to download data from PTPP. Um, I, I told Bob that I'm going to spend another 15 minutes for this, but I think it looks like a, maybe another 15 minutes or so to, to finish this section, and then we will see how we go from there. So because there are another issue, I'd like to introduce this to you called a crown job. Okay, this is uh, exercise 2.3, and there's another issue, another very important feature about the Linux called the crown, or crown tape. Okay, crown is, is a demo that execute you get at a scheduled time. So you, you, you prepare a, a task. For example, if you want to know the data of the Atlantic, for example, we can do only Pacific by Atlantic, or yes, or yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you, you right now download GTHPP4, right, which stands for GTPP Nasidia version number four, and underscore followed by two characters PA or Pacific, yeah. you can change AT or Atlantic. And followed by the four year number, 2000, whatever the number is, it began 1990. Okay. And followed by another two, red, two, two number for months. Okay. So you can, you can change that. You can change that naming convention to download any, any ocean for the year beginning 1990 up to last month. Okay. So, so you, you, know the, you know the scripts in a procedure to get download. Because you don't want to do it manually. You want to do it on a regular basis without human intervention. You don't want, you want to sit in the background and let it run and then it will arrive at your or desktop or PC or, or Linux on a regular basis. So the way to do it is in the cron job, a cron command. Okay. Now, this is a little bit complicated, not really complicated, but it's somehow complicated. This is the table telling the crown job, the, the procedure when, where, to find the statement to run the job you'd like them to run. Okay. Now, before going, without going into detail about the slides right here, I, I will just jump into the real case, and we will test. Okay. This is a hands-on exercise. I hope this one will be much easier for, for, for everybody. Okay. This is the exercise. We're going to create a shared script called 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 uh, echo dot sh. Okay, so I shall I just go through uh, this step for you, and I will go one by one you know, later on. So we like to create a file called echo dot sh with only one line called hello world or echo hello world. Okay, and you have to change the permission to run it. Otherwise, the file just sitting there and do nothing. So step four, you have to give the execution permission to your script, okay? By doing that, you have to say change, as I said earlier, change mode to 755 echo.sh. And you have to create another file called quant.txt. Okay, and from there, you should be able to run that. Okay, so, so right now, I will give you a step one by one instruction how to do this. Okay, you, you, right now you are in the, oh, okay.
Control C will clear background process. Okay, so I we we are in the working directory, right? In your working directory. Sometimes some people is even deeper. So so to go back to your home directory at the very beginning, you just say C D and nothing. Change directory and it says enter. It will take you up all the way up to your home directory. Just a C D and press enter. Okay, so so you will you will back return to your home directory. So from here, we like to write a shared script called Hello World. Okay, uh, okay. So you just say vi. Okay, as you as we did earlier, echo e c h o dot s h. Okay, vi space echo. Dot sh, and you hit enter. So again, this is a new file, right? So we had to. What do we had to do? I want to type something, so I had to type i for insert, right? So I said i for insert. Now you say if you are typing, you only had enter one word called echo. C H one nine echo, double quote, hello. B L L O hello word. And its combination end with another double quote. Okay, now type escape and save it. Okay, so you 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 have to return to your command line and say x. Okay, and then you will save. It. So you will see a new file called echo dot sh here, right? So right now echo dot sh does didn't do anything. It's just a Plain text file. So to make this file executable, you have to change the permission for this file. So change permission. The command to change permission is say ch change modification. Ch mod as I say in my slide say change to seven five five. Okay. This means this file is executable or writable by you only. That's seven. And the five five means this file is executable or writable by anybody. So you say change permission to seven five five, and the echo, the file name called echo. Okay. So everybody with me. You say change permission to seven five five. And the, the the file the comment to change is echo dot sh. So so just type. You have to, you, have, you have to edit the file first. You have to make a file called echo dot sh. Okay, let me show you what I have right now. I, I will show you the content of echo.sh. There's only one line. Called, called, called echo hello. It's only only one line in that file. Okay? So anybody done this so far? Okay, now I have to change the permission to the echo.sh by typing change mod to 755echo.sh. Five okay, now I can run it. echo.sh. Okay, so that's the way to create a script.
So are we done here? Did you see hello world on your screen? This is our goal. You should be able to see hello world after you enter the echo.sh at your command line. Okay, so who is enabled to see to do that? You, okay, how about the others? You, can you do that? Okay, that's good. Okay, let, let me see what you got. That's good, that's good. We can't hear the main thing then. It may take a little bit longer, but we are getting there. Okay, so, so I hope, I believe that everybody should arrive at the same point right now. We, we, can, we can write a program, very simple program called echo.sh, and then make that program excusable by everybody, okay? And you should be able to walk that program from the command line. So, so next thing I'm going to teach you how to schedule a program to run automatically. No, and this can apply for GTPB, how to get the GTPB program running automatically and download for you, even you are not in front of terminal. Okay, so by doing that, we're going to write another, yeah, let, let's try another, another thing, called echo.sh uh, and the slash to hotcron.cron.log. So to do this, echo, Everybody follow me. E C H O dot S H. Okay, and, and the greater than, greater than, as you see on the screen. But you don't have to type squiggle slash. Just say echo dot S H space greater than. That means you redirect it to another file called crown dot log. Okay, if you don't type greater than crown lock, the output will display on your screen. So you like to redirect to another file, which is called crown.log. So, so after you type in, uh, you just hit the return key. Okay, so that's different, right? So the output of the echo.sh has been redirect to crown.log. So we like to take a quick look Quick look on the crown.log. Doing that is a more. Is a more. More crown.log. You, sh you should be able to see only one line in the file crown.log. You should, you should be able to see hello.word. So, so echo. Dot sh space greater than the file name, that means you do the right output to a file instead of going to the screen. Okay? Okay, so next step, we're going to create a cron job file called cron.txt. The same thing, using VI editor, just a VI cron.txt. That's another new one. Okay, and enter. And you go to the insert mode, because you want to insert, you say I, Begin with five star with space in between. So star space star space. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, right? You want to you want to run echo dot sh on the on the screen you see squiggle slash which means indicate this 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 file is located on my home directory. Okay, we begin with squiggle. You know, this, 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 this small symbol, look like a wave. Okay, 
followed by slash. This mean indicate always starting from your home directory. Okay, because right now echo dot sh is located in your home directory, so you want to make sure that this program is invoked from your home directory. That's the way we had to do with the squiggle slash and the e echo echo dot sh. And you let it redirect this one to a location. You let them to locate. So we redirect it to its, your home directory. Again, you have to tap squiggle slash and the crown job, which means the crown job will invoke echo.sh and redirect, actually overwrite to the cron.log file. Okay, so you should have this line in your cron.txt file. So anybody have this file? No? Okay, and uh, save this file by return back to command line and uh, type X to save and quit. Okay. Okay, try try to try to look at this file what you have by doing by typing more and the cron dot txt to make sure you, you type correctly. If you didn't see this night on your screen, then let me know. How you got this now? You got it? How about when you? Okay. I, I'm going to double check with them. The, the all five stars, the meaning for the all the five stars, tell the system to run the cron.sh every minute. Every minute. Okay, so right now, just type double L, long distance, only. And look at your the timestamp for the cron.log. Mine is, is June 23rd, 10.07. I don't know what your time. 
that got to be, uh, since that one is on US East Coast, so suppose it should be uh, 10, 10 something morning, right? because this is how behind. So on your screen, you should see the crown, crown lock with 10 or 7 or somewhere there. Okay, so right now we're going to invoke echo.sh, automatically run in the background, and uh, you should be able to see the cron.log update on a minute, every minute. So to invoke your cron job, you just tap cron, tap, see that, and, and cron.txt. Okay, so this is the command you have to tap. Cron, tap, one word, space, cron.txt. Okay, it's running in background. It's running. So remember your last time, you the time step or your cron dialog. So one minute after, we'd like to double check if the time step update. Because on screen right now, you see the cron log. This is the time step, it's 1007. So one minute after, it should be 1008 or even later than 1007. Otherwise, the cron job is not running. Okay, but in the meantime, there's another command to see if your cron job wrong or not. So the command to do that is called cron tab dash L listing. Okay, so I, you should be able to see this line by typing cron tab space dash L. So that's mean my cron job running in background. I should update cron.log every minute because I schedule them to run on a, based on a minute. Every minute got to be run. And the purpose for doing this because this is a demo. I, we don't want to let them wait in too long to run. So, okay, so let's double check if the cron.log update. Uh, let's see. You can just say L, L, long listing cron dot log. Yeah, so mine is updated to 10.16. It was 10.07, so mine is updated to 10.16. As everybody should have 10.16, the time state should change it to 10.16. 17, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you learned two things so far about a cron tab. Okay, to invoke cron tab, you have to create a text file called a cron something according to this structure, the five star. And the later on, now you can study what the start means. In this case, the job will run it on every minute, on the minute, every every minute. Okay, and output it to cron dialog. Okay, so. The second thing you learn so far is to see your cron job running in the background. So to see that, you, you have to say cron tab dash L for listing. So you should be able to see the listing for your cron job running in the background. Okay. So everybody with me? So because we, we have to kill this, we don't want to let it run in the background for too, too long. Okay, but anyway, I'm going to tell you how to how to remove. So to remove the cron job, you just type C R O N T A B dash R. They will remove it. Okay. Once you say cron tab dash R will remove the cron job, and then there will be no cron job running in the background. So you type cron tab dash L. There's no cron job running. Okay. So anybody know how to run Kong job?
Okay. So we are behind the schedule for a 1.5 section. So this is the end of the base job, the shear script, which was supposed to be finished by lunchtime, before lunchtime. So we are once more than one section behind. But I'd like to make sure that we understand what we have been so far. Learn so far. We learn how to use the VI by very four or three key, uh, command I for insert O for insert of the, the next nice and so forth. So we learn how to update the BASSRC file. Okay, we learn how to run the cron job. Okay, and then it took so much time to learn how to use the VI, which is very key, it's very important for the future programming uh, purpose. So what I like to do here, um, but anyway, any question for me so far about about the, this is a very fundamental issue, uh, how to run the Linux uh, command. Um, if there's no more question, I think I will let let do something more more fun. Okay, this is. This is fun, but I like to, that's another issue. I like to, you to learn. So, so I'm going to close this section. Okay, I will say, don't save. Okay. You have all the PowerPoint available for you on the web, and that's how a lot of people download. So, so this session supposed to be per, which is another language. Okay. And uh, I, don't want to confuse you because this is a little bit very similar to share script. So what I like to do before lunch, before the break for today, because we only have 14 minutes left, and I like to skip this section. And we are going to learn R. Originally, I plan to teach you R in Linux command, Linux environment. But I feel that it may be a little bit difficult or a little bit challenging for you to do that way. So in order to run R in Linux, we like to run R in Windows only, which everybody should be more familiar with Windows. So whatever we learn in Windows can be applied to Linux. Okay. I think it's very difficult for you to learn the Linux just within maybe four or five hours. It's, it's extremely difficult. Uh, and uh, just four or five hours so far, I don't think you will feel comfortable using Linux. But you know, you, you have to refresh what you learned so far, you know, either tonight or when you return to your institution. So before you become familiar with the Linux, you now we can jump into R in, in Windows, which is much easier. So so I will skip the per for now. And for tomorrow or on Wednesday, you just exercise used by using R, and I will come back and will tell you a very basic instruction how to run Perl. That's it. We're not going to do any programming Perl because I think that will be more challenging for everybody in the room. Okay. So so we're going to skip section number two. You have PowerPoint. You you can look at PowerPoint. And you any question? No, no to ask me. Now, you are not this week. You can email me. My email address is Charles. This is my email address here. Okay, charles.sun at noah.go. So you can email me, and, and you can, we can, I can, normally I respond email very quick, you know, within just almost no delay you know, at all. So, so that's the way I like to do for the rest of the course. Okay, I like to make sure, at least, you can take R with you and going home and do the exercise right away. But what we learned so far, using Linux to download TTAPP is very important. Okay, once you download, you should be able to use R to do data analysis. Okay, so either tomorrow or the, on Wednesday, in addition to what you learned this morning by using wget, we will, I will tell you, you to use an, another web interface, which you can subset the area of your interest. Okay. And you can work from there by using R. I think this is a very important one. Okay, so so I will skip the per and I'll go jump to the R for now. And we can come back per as needed. Okay, now let's go to a more important one, which is called R, which is my original design. 
for, for using R. OK. Now, I may move a little bit faster this time, because I like to make sure that I cover the key slides I like to show you. So you will feel that I move too fast, and then just raise your hand and let me know. I can slow down a little bit. OK. So skip this one, skip this one. So, so the objective for this section, I like to provide an overview of the programming language in R. Okay, and don't feel scary. It's, oh, you come on, you coming to to program in R? I haven't learned VI yet, but don't worry. Okay, so we, I will be very patient to tell you how to do that in program. And I hope we have passed the most difficult one or more challenging one by using VI. So, so this one should be very easy. No, relatively easy, but not really easy. But should be. So don't be scared away. OK, so this is the three objective I like to, to do. Provide an overview of how to program in, in R. And uh, this is the best methodology, in my view, to do for using R in data analysis and graphics. It's, it's a very powerful machine. And, and demonstrate how to manipulate and visualize oceanographic data, at least, because we are working on ocean data. You can do almost any kind of data you like. OK. So this is outcome. And I hope out of this section, number one, you should be able to identify the location to download R, not install it. OK. Now, not just R, but also the user contribute R package. I hope you should be able to write a very simple R syntax and, and semantics. You will develop a very greater conceptual understanding of data analysis and the graphic using R. Finally, you will become familiar with the R through the answer exercise. Again, I try to make the exercise as much simple as, as I can. OK, this is the content. And for saving time, I don't want to go through this. You always have PowerPoint. OK, let's go to get started. I got permission from IOD Ocean Teacher program allow you to download installed R on the next desktop. So what I like you to do is open your browser on your desktop, okay, either either Firefox, and download R to your machine. Okay, and here's the link www.r-project.org. And some of the instruction showing on the slide is installed on Linux, okay, which may require your root privilege, your system administrator. Okay, maybe not actually there's a way to get around with get permission from your system administrator. You can store a, a standalone piece uh, software on your local uh, hard drive. But this is suggested for for people who has the administrative privilege to install R. Okay. But right now, we are authorized to install R on your local machine, the, the, the machine which you are, you are using right now. OK, so go to, go to uh, download R from here. OK, go ahead and do it. OK, uh, open your browser. dot no HTTP okay did anybody go to that web web page website R project website. Okay. C R A N dot R dash project dot org. The, the URL. Is it too small for you? For anybody? Yeah, no, should be okay. Okay. 
Now select download R for Windows. Okay. Now you click on install R for the first time. Okay. Now you click on download R 3.1.0 for Windows. Okay, I'm not going to download on this, this, this machine, but everybody should be able to download. Okay, let, let me make sure everybody, are you downloading? The Rs, is it done? Complete? Okay, I believe you can open, go to the download, download directory and double click on that file. And it will start install for you. So it done? Okay, so click on the icon. Uh, so installing R is really not easy. So I'm going to try to install R on this machine. Which I totally am familiar with the Macintosh, but I will see what I can do here. So, so anybody install R for Windows? I'm trying to install download R for Macintosh. Okay. Okay. Now it should be here, right? Okay, so I will let it run in the background and I'll continue my presentation. Okay, uh, where is my presentation? Okay, so so far we be able to download and install, and you know where to download, where to install, when you return to your, your, your office. So, so let's move to the next, next slide. Okay, uh, let me see. So install R for Windows is, is really not easy to do that. Okay, now, you, before you can participate in R hands-on on exercise, you need to create a working directory in the desktop. So this is different than what we did earlier this morning. This morning we are working on that machine, but we are kind of switching into your local machine, which you may have more control, and hopefully the system will be more stabilized this time. So I hope you know how to create a working directory and your desktop directory. Right? So, so go ahead and do that. Create a working directory as we did this morning for Linux, but instead in Linux, we create a working directory in your desktop called the G Training. Okay. Okay. So in R, R before you do that, you know, you on your desktop, you should be able to see a R icon. Okay, we have to modify that icon. Okay, so right click on the R shortcut icon on your desktop icon. Okay, and click property menu to open property windows. Okay. Did anybody got this window? Yeah, okay. So after that, you have to change your user home directory. This, did you see that start in directory? Right here, start in. Okay. And right now it's called a C user Charles document. But we like to change that into your desktop. 
Okay. See that? This is, right now this is default because I'm using my PC. So the username is Charles on my PC, on my PC. So if we had to change the star in right here to your desktop. Okay, so got to be something is C colon backslash users backslash. I don't know what's the username on that in your machine. But you should be able to see desktop and, and the backslash, this got to be G training instead of say R data training. Okay. The reason for doing this is each time when you invoke R icon, they will take you to your working directory. Instead of R default directory. So that will save you a lot of typing. Okay, let, let me walk through, see everybody got so far. So next step, we will to say, okay. Now we will uh, click okay to close the window. <coughs> okay. So, so that's the way set out R in the window environment. So this time you can try to click on the R icon on the desktop. It should take you directly to the, your uh, working directory, T training, instead of take you to the documents. Okay. So, but we will do that later on. So, so this is set up the running R in window in window environment. Uh, okay. So this explain to you what is R. Okay. R, R is an open source software. And it's a programming language. And to generate, you need to write a code to run the job, to do the same kind of job. Okay. The good thing is that for this class, I almost write everything. Uh, we have the code to, to do what we like to do. And in the, for the hands-on exercise, I also have an answer for you. You open to uh, IOD Ocean Teacher Pro uh, website. You should be able to see there's another directory called um, material or, or something, right? A training material. Okay, let me see. If I can show you where it is. Okay, I go to. Ocean teacher class. Okay, now. Fourteen. Hmm. Go to. I have to go in. Okay. So you see this area, the course material. Okay. And, and then from here, you see a script. There's a directory called scripts. Okay. Right now, either on a Linux machine, I only, uh, up, there's only a few directory files over there. But this is a complete, you know, the, including the hands on exercise and the answer to the hands on exercise. Okay. So right, right now, let's say, for example, we are in the uh, session two. And you got the echo SH. This is what you learned uh, earlier today. Okay, uh, this is just open it. Okay, I, I will 
tell you the shortcut to get answer, you got stuck somewhere. Uh, this here. See, this is what we typed earlier. So everything, including the hands are exercise and the answer to the exercise, is right in that area. So you got stuck. You already can go back to to, to visit. So you you will not miss anything. No, everything is covered. Okay. So for example, exercise three. There's a get GTPP data per script, which I kind of skip right now. Okay, and this exercise. But we'll come back to to that exercise. Oh, gee, what happened? Okay. So let's jump right now. We are in section number four. So there's exercise four. Okay. But for right now, I'm just telling you the location for the course material. So you always can come back. Maybe tonight. Maybe you, I want you to study from the hotel and then look into the section. So you can learn ahead of time. Okay, as as we go. So so learn before you come to the class. Just take a quick look so you have feeling what the teacher will going to telling you during the course. So it's much easier. You, you learn first and uh, it's easy to understand what we, I'm trying to give to you. Okay. So this, I don't want to stop. I don't, I don't want to install for now. Okay, let's just say, so what is R? This is, a, okay. So, so right now I'm going to give a very brief instruction about, about R. R is an interactive object-oriented language, okay? Now it's a comprehensive statistical and a graphical programming language. You don't have to write the whole very detailed you know, uh, scripts, how to do a calculation. They say, I want to calculate the mean of the number from one to 10. So, so normally you have to write your either pro trend or C program, you to do the counting by yourself. But in R, you just say mean and the one to 10, you will return the result very, very easy. So, Later on, we will, we're going to have a hands on exercise to demonstrate how easy it can be done. Okay, so this one, our environment, I, I think you, is is in the interactive, is an interactive data handling and the storage facility. It's a suite of operators and the calculation on arrays. It's a large, coherent, integrated collection of tools or data analysis. So that's mean, what does it mean? Tools means there are so many users write a R script and then make an R script available on the, for public use. So, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's mean you don't have to start from the beginning to write the everything is there. So before you start to write some application, you, you're always looking for help on the web. And the, normally I would do, you I would do is begin with uppercase R, okay? And, and they say R min, for example, right? I've been looking for someone you just R code available for how to calculate mean. So, so I will open the browser and type R uppercase and the space by what kind of topics I'm looking for. Say mean for looking for script for doing mean and so forth. So, so, so there's always a lot of integrated collection tool available on the web. So you really it make your job much easier. Okay, and again, there are so many graphic tools available for data analysis. Unfortunately, there are not too many tools available for oceanographic data. Okay, and for some reason, there are a few oceanographic data available, uh, uh, written by people from Australia, but not quite you know, comprehensive, as I like to see. So to me, I'm starting to create a, a tool for ocean data management, and okay. So, so it's a well-developed and effective programming language with link to C, C++, and Fortran. What does that mean? You have your own program. For example, you know, for doing a numerical model, you, you, you are using a Fortran. Most likely, the ocean science scientists, they are using Fortran to develop an ocean model, uh, model code. You can use the R to link to that module program in Fortran. And in the, the lack or the problem with the Fortran, they don't have tools to display for display. So by combination between Fortran and the R, so you can generate your code from Fortran 
and pass the result back to R for display. So that make it you know, one thing in one place. So, so that's the good thing for R. There always a linkage between R and the other language, for example, R and the Fortran and the C and the C++. Okay, so we're going to do R demo. So right now I'm talking about typing R, but you don't want to do, we don't want to do that. Open your, your R by clicking on the icon right now. The slide is designed for the R for the Linux, but you can do the same thing on the, on the PC. So open your R by clicking on the R demo, by clicking on the R icon. So I anticipate you should, you, should be, you should be able to pop up a, a R window as I show you, as you showed me earlier. Okay, now, now, okay, now I don't have example here. Let me see what example. Okay, now. Okay. So this is this is slide for running R from Linux command. So when you we can open Linux, you type R, and you should be able to see a pop-up screen as you see on the right hand side on the screen. This is R working window. Okay. So this is R window. So did anybody got this kind of window? Very similar to this window. This is for Linux, but it, the, for the Linux even has more feature because on the, on, on the on PC you should be able to see more button on the near the top, more button near here, but you should, you should be see very, something very similar to this one. Okay? So, so to quit, you just say Q and the parenthesis and then parenthesis. That will quit your, your R. And, okay, so this is the way to invoke R and quick R. Okay. This, this is, okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to run R from the command, command prompt window. Uh, this, is a, this is different. Let me skip that. Okay. This is running from the command line, from the window command line, but we don't want to do that. We, don't, we want to run R from your window icon. This is another way to, you know, to, to invoke R. I will go down. Okay, this is a, very similar to your with your uh, PC window environment, you see there's there an option, the menu bar on the top, the file, uh, allow you to open file, and the demo will show you doing some kind of demo stuff and so forth. Okay, uh, let me skip this one because it's R, and this is a quitting, quitting. Okay, uh, this is running R in interactive mode. Okay, now this is the real, I'd like you to do a demo right now. Okay. Did anybody bring the R window up? The R window in your, in your desktop. Okay. You did that type what I show on the screen. X less than dash three. Okay. This, the greater than sign is the R prompt. That's I mean R is sitting there waiting for you to give him instruction what you'd like him to do. So in this case, we assign number three to a variable called X. Okay. In in old days, R you send less than dash as the assignment. You will assign three to X. So you can do either way, either X as I show on the screen or X equal to three. That all work fine. But right now, this is say X, let's dash three. Okay, and, and you, you enter, enter. Now you say X, let's see what happened. So the first step, you tap X, let's done dash and three. The next step, you tap X. So you, should, so tell me what you, what you got after that step number two. The red part is you have to type on your screen. It's your screen. Okay, you type X. This. Maybe I can do this way. Okay, now. Uh, now where is my mouse? See here. Okay, this is high tech. Okay, so, so you have to look on, on the TV monitor. 
Okay. Now, on both, either TV monitor or the wall. So right now, I allow you to just hit tap uh, X. Right, you see that? X less, less dash, which is the assignment in the R, and, and three. Okay, this, and then you say tap, enter. Okay, so it got nice, right? But actually, the X, or the number three installed. So you got tap X, you should be able to see the system. We store three as a value in a variable x. Okay. So, <clears throat> so next step, I'm going to do a calculation for subtract r2 to number 2 to x and assign it to a variable called the y. So I say y, equal, well, will, I'm going to say x plus 2 and assign it to number variable the variable y. So, and this will be y. Okay, now you type y. So that's equal to 5. So, so this is the way that you write a, a interactive program with the R, and sometimes you can do a, a use, use the R as a calculator. This I want to add a uh, Henry by, you know, uh, 200, and you know the answer is 300. So this, this is a 100, plus 2 entry, and do use the R as the calculator, so they will return to use 3 entry. So you can do an interactive calculation with, with R, and use the R as a, as, a, as a calculator. Okay, now, from here, I want you to just go ahead to, okay, for, for, for 5, you want G assign an array with the three number, 10, entry, and 1,000 to a variable, Array called G, and it, and you, you type G, assign an array was entry, one entry, and one thousand to, to to G. Okay, and you type G. So you will assign an array to G variable. Okay. Uh, and so so, so there's you can you can do many things. You can do assign log number ten. Base, base 10 to, to double one. Okay, and you can do, so this is kind of more fun part. I like to do test on the, doing the number 13. Okay, and they see, tell me what you got. Follow the instruction on the screen and they tell me what you got. Okay, did anyone got the screen as I show on the wall? Very simple plotting for 10, 100, 1,000 versus the log scale on the, on the vertical scale. Okay. Okay. So you can do the same thing for another case. The double two, you got log, different, different log scale is there. Based on G of E, okay, I can do the same thing for plotting. Plot G worth W two, or another one. You, you can do so many things. Okay, so so just exercise from nine to fifteen, and I'll give you uh, about maybe it's time to quit, but maybe just two minutes. So pi pi is is a constant value. It's a reserved is is a reserved value in R. You, you should 
you should get a value look like a three point one four something. Oh, it didn't come up. Let me see. Yeah. So the pi pi is a constant value in R. Okay, uh, I think it has been a kind of long day for today. And so far, does anyone have a question about how to install R or how to invoke in Windows? Because Windows to look like a much simpler than the Linux. Yes. The equal sign? Yeah. Uh, it, it, but in the old day, the, for some reason, the, the inventor of R, I think really, to me, this is my, my personal thinking, maybe I'm not right. They, they want to distinguish some different language between Fortran or old language, so they create less than equal, less than a dash. But in the, in the newer version, they, they change their mind, so well, not either way is fine. Okay. Charles, I was just going to note that if you, on the R site where you downloaded the, uh, the software, there's manuals and all sorts of things. I just downloaded the ebook version of the instruction manual. So you, know, you could download that and read through it. And it looks like there's lots yeah. of good documentation. Yeah. I, I, make a no, I make a special note for GTP training. So when you go to ILDE, uh, Ocean Teacher website, Let's go there. Let me show you where it is. I call, I, I said R essential for GTAPP training course, which kind of get all the very really important that you have to know, or you have to learn how to write R for GTAPP data training. So you go to the training, uh, the, the uh, Ocean Teacher website. Okay, where we are. Okay. Uh, I said, let's try to go to reference. Um, do you see that? End of the section number four. I, okay, I, let me see. I thought we opened that section number four, but I can, I don't know. Ten of editing. Okay. Did anybody see this this page? No? There's a there's a there's a uh, Microsoft Word language in Microsoft Word called the R. Okay, yeah, okay, I can I can open it. Okay. So I, I make it public now. The finding called R underscore essential dot docs. Okay, so this, I, I wrote this document, it's, it's just a free page, and I can open right now, and open with the, oh. Yeah, I, I download. Yeah, okay. No. Nope. Go 
go to application. Need, need to P2P solutions? Is that? No, no. P2P solutions. Where? Just above. Just above applications. Where it is? Oh, here we are. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe you want to download and save and read tonight as a homework. <laughs> yeah. So, so I wrote this just uh, kind of highlight uh, how to install, where to download R and how to install, and also a kind of trick tips you know, what using R. Okay. So you can go through this tonight and then maybe you can come back tomorrow. Uh, maybe begin with R and 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 we will see what we can do. Okay? Yeah. So so far what do you think? No. Maybe we should stop here and come back tomorrow. Just relax a little bit and come back to get a fresh air. Yeah. The, the key issues, I'd like to make sure that we understand how to use an R and to analyze GDPP data, and where to download, where to use the R to, to visualize. So number one to, is using R. Number two is also ODV, that's for sure. And ODV over D installing. So, so I'd like to make a few, because I prepare a lot of material, maybe a little bit roughly too, too much. But I will pick out the, the key, the very important section, okay? So, any any question for me? Yes. I don't know what the best things to do, but maybe what personally I would prefer to to learn this, you know, not very quickly, and maybe skip the student presentation. Yes. And, you know, because we are a bit ahead, a bit behind. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the rest of us will, will, will take some time tomorrow for our have to discard something. Personally, I would prefer to discard the, the, the student presentations rather than the content itself. You mean, so you are more concerned about the student presentation on, on Thursday? To take some more time to Yeah, to yeah, this? yeah, so yeah. Oh, definitely, yes. So if you have to skip something, yeah. you prefer to skip the presentation. Yeah. So you get more. Yeah. So, so. This is this is what I like. I, I wanted to maybe. So the, the presentation what I would suggest is right now after this is three hours the presentation and the book is only yours. So I would suggest you do just a one and a half hour session for the Okay. So just one session for the presentations and make them a lot shorter. Okay. So we repeat every another session for yeah. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that's an excellent suggestion. So we will cut your presentation from twenty minutes to ten minutes. Or less. <laughs> How about that? Yes. Okay. I think this is an excellent suggestion, and so make it con kind of combine each other. I think presentation is very important. Okay, to let me to know how good I'm doing or how bad I'm doing. Okay, and how could you learn? So I agree that we cut presentation from twenty minutes to ten minutes or maybe less. That kind of and just you just talk and you come out and talk what you learn. Before give you presentation, I want to make sure that you learn what you have to give presentation. I don't want you to come here and 
I don't know how to present. I, I will be terrible. That will be my, my fault. OK. So during the course, you know, I will make sure that you learn what you are supposed to give presentation. OK. So don't, don't worry. For example, how to get data from GTPP, how to import into, how to convert it to different format by using R and so forth. So don't, don't worry. No. Yeah. OK. So the one thing, the homework for today, for tonight, is that look at the R document, which I just showed you earlier. OK, that goes through, it's only three pages. And did everybody bring their own laptop, PC, laptop PC? But I was thinking, but take out being here, or well, I am being here. You, know, you will bring your laptop. And I was the suggestion that you, you, you are allowed, because some institution may not allow you to install software on your PC. So if you are OK, you can install. I will encourage you to install R on your laptop, OK? Since I'm here. So if you have any question, I'm here. And I will be, it's easy for me and you. I will in person, face-to-face -face discussion instead of change by email. So this is my suggestion. Say, you, you are allowed to install R on your laptop or whatever machine you have. Go ahead to do so. And then we can learn from you. And even you can, you don't have to use the uh, IOD provided desktop, like that's fine. You can use your own laptop. Okay, which you are more familiar with this, right? So, so either Linux or PC version, they are almost identical, except on the PC, you may have difficulty to run in an automated procedure. You, you cannot, you have to run manually. That's it. Which may be not an issue for, for you. Okay? So, the homework for tonight. If you allow to install R, I will encourage you to do so. And try to read the R menu, which I, I wrote, you know, and understand as much as you can. So tomorrow, when we return, I would like to go over what we learned so far, it's particularly about R, but for, for, the, for the Linux system. Okay. And, and then we'll, we will finish the R training exercise. Okay. And then I will give, turn over to Bob, give you a really overall review about GDP program, and we'll go from there. OK? So is that OK? OK, so so we end today, and I'm still hanging here for another, whatever the meaning I will be. OK?